Yeah. Back at you. Oh, yeah. Uh, the four. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Hey, you won. Hey. Hey. This for you. Thank you. This for all of us. You know, I think that horse's stall is adjacent to our horse's stall. Look now what you did to me with this woman. <laughs> Stay one more. Thank you. Thank you. I feel like a landing strip. Would your parents still be with us? No, they're both gone. Hey, folks. Hi, folks. Hey, Cody. When I first met this woman, I fell in love. I mean, I really did. I mean, she, what a smile, what a heart. Um, an amazing person, and I mean, she is one hell of a wonderful actor um, and an incredible advocate. Um, my dear friend, Dina Bell, how are you? Good to see you. Oh, good to see you. I can't good to see anybody these days. I know, right? We miss people. I tell you, it feels like a couple of years since I've seen you. Definitely, at least. Yeah, 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 for I think. The, for, for the last year we get home. Right? Oh, a year. Oh, home alone. Oh my God, I feel like it. At least he can, at least he can go skate. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! I know, right? He was like, "I'm not having this thing for you, but I can't even do that." Yeah, yeah. I I remember uh, we used to hang out at the Directors Guild and go see the movies. I miss that. Uh, yeah, I do too. Maybe we'll maybe in a year we'll be doing that again. I'm there when you are. I am too. So, you know. Again, like I said, you are seriously one of my favorite people. I mean, it's, a, you know, like family. It just feels that way. Yeah. And, you know, I'm trying to think, where did we actually meet? I came to uh, the studio in Bubby to listen to Jimmy Jewel read from a book. Uh, she, she had been talking about you non-stop and then she said oh i'm doing a reading at one of the classes why don't you come check it out and like okay so i came here with a beautiful reading from Jerry, and then she introduced us and i was hooked immediately I was uh -huh. like what do you do i want to know everything you do i i, I was hooked well, and then and then we you you did classes and you did I mean more than that I mean you have you've been an actress I mean it, going way back not too way back maybe a couple of months to the age of three <laughs> way back <laughs> a few more okay maybe some years uh, you were the poster child for United Cerebral Palsy yeah for ten years. Now, the, and that's actually a record, right? Don't they? It's only they, like. They, they usually do it. They change it. They change the people like every two to three years. I do it for 10 years. Because of that, that essence that you have. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I could see that. I could see that. Um, and um, I, I mean, you have. You've had roles on Knots Landing? 
You've had roles on CBS Movie of the Week with Nancy Cartwright, who is the voice of Bart Simpson. Um, that was amazing. Tell me, tell me about it. It was just a, it was a lot of fun. I was uh, eight years old. And, um, they saw, I think they saw me on one of the telethons and they called my agent and I got, I got on in the movie. And it's funny because I did not know this at the time, but they had lines for me. But I was seven years, eight years old. I just took it upon myself to say whatever I wanted to say. They like, that's maybe the movie will, will keep me. So I, I created my own lines. Oh, I love this. Do you have a copy of this somewhere? I do. So my, my, my parents still have a VHS. And I keep saying, OK, come on, we got the good digital. But we haven't done it yet. But yeah, we have. We actually found it on YouTube. Um, a couple of years ago, and we streamed it on our TV. We showed my son. My son had never seen it before. Oh my gosh! I've got to check that now. I've got to like research. I wonder if it's on YouTube somewhere. That's what we watched. We watched it on YouTube. Oh my God! Okay, that's what I'm gonna do right when I get off of the interview. Uh, I wanted to show my son. Oh. Yeah, he, He's a teenager, so he's like, yeah, okay, whatever. I remember the last time I saw him, he was this big. I bet he's this big now. He told me, he told me to tell you. He, he, he measured himself that in 95, six and a quarter. Oh, really? Yeah. Ah. Well, say hello for me. I will. It's playing video games like we do. Brandon, right? Yeah. Hey, Brandon. <laughs> Hi, baby. <laughs> and your wonderful husband, uh, Daniel. Daniel, yeah. He's, he's one brother. Yeah, yeah. Um, so let me ask you, you your main focus is advocacy, correct? Yes. What is it about ad advocacy that you love so much? Um, I love making trouble. <laughs> you like making trouble. Good trouble, huh? Yes. Uh, I just, uh, I got arrested two times. I read that. Yeah. Where and uh, what for? Washington, D.C. Not a, a what a what a better place to get arrested. <laughs> Both times were Washington DC. For civil disobedience. Uh, they came up to us and said, you could leave or you could be taken away. We were like, go ahead, I'm not, I'm not leaving. So they actually have a video of me being escorted away by the police. Do you have that video too? I do, I do, <laughs> I do. experienced that yet being arrested I guess I still have to <laughs> but hopefully it's for something positive and <laughs> it's, a good, it's, a good, it's a good feeling when you feel like it's for a good cause yeah yeah and uh, the second time the truth uh, two years in a row and then the second time I got arrested I went to the um, they didn't really take it to jail. They just put us in a separate room, like booked us there. And the next day we had to go to the, the 
police station in the PFI. So when they went to the police station, the second time, he was like, oh, I remember you. You were here last year. Welcome back. <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. I love that. And then at the end, he said, good for you. I tell you, you know, doing it for a, a, a mighty cause is so worth it. So worth it. At the time, my, my son was like in sixth or seventh grade, and he was sitting with my parents. And so Daniel called my parents to tell them what happened. And they're like, what? And so when he explained why, my parents were like, good for her. And then my parents went and got my son from school. And they're like, okay, before we tell you this, your mom is okay. She was like, what happened to mom? So they told her, and she goes, why? And so he explained, she explained why my mom was, when we were like, good, good for mom. Yes, good job. <laughs> and then and then he went to school the next day and told the prince my phone got wrecked yesterday. Everyone was like, oh. and then he explained why and the kids were like, you mom lost me. I love that. I love that. Well, you know, go for it. I mean, the things that you've done, I mean, you you taught self-advocacy skills to people with disabilities um, and, and for uh, the LA paratransit and the riders. Yeah. That's that true. And then you were also a commissioner on the LA City Commission of, of Disabilities. Yeah. And that was for the audio signals that we hear on the street, the beep, beep, beep as we walk across. So whenever I hear that beep now, because I didn't know that, I'm going to think of you. I did it for one corner, actually. I was working in Denver, and um, well, I was working in, um, so it was very busy. The street was really long, it's six, seven lanes, and the, the, the signal is not very, the, when you try to go across, late at my green very fast. So I, 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 I commissioned the mayor's office and I was like, you know, something that's safe for, for any of us. If you're in a million chair and you're trying to get across the street, or if you're visually impaired, you don't know how long to light it, they need help. So I commissioned the mayor's office and it, it, it took a while. I was advocacy is very slow. If you want a media graph a media gratification, I could advocacy in that way to go. But it's slow and steady. It took yeah. a year to do and they stayed on the media topic and they eventually installed one on Jenny Spinner Board and Beethoven. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I, you know, those, some of those streets are scary. I mean, and like you said, too, it's the, the lights just boom, boom. You don't have time to get get across the street. Yeah, so if it's someone, if someone who is digitally impaired is walking, they don't know how far they're going and they don't know how much time they have. So if the light can signal, you got 10 seconds, 9 seconds, 8 then they know I better hurry up. Right, right. Well, I tell you, you know, sometimes we don't think about how things happen, and then we realize it's people like you who make them happen. Well, uh, it's me, but I, I also work with a lot of other people. It's not just me. Like the, um, the, 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 the leadership class. I taught. I taught that with my my coworker and friend Cindy. Uh, so the, we 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 developed that class together. We put all the ideas together and the topics together, and we designed a, a ten week course. Um, because the, a lot of people with disabilities want to advocate, but they don't know how. 
where do you start? How do I so so I could cut on my corner? How do I get one? So we decided why don't we develop our own curriculum? So it was a 10 week course about what the little do, what does that mean? Um, um, the discussion of what the ADA, what does that mean? What does they cover? Um, what, what, uh, how do I become a commissioner or sit on city council? So, uh, and then we had um, a field trip, one of our field trips was visiting a local legislature. So we took everyone with us. We visit the legislature. They said they could see this, not the scary. To talk to them and tell them what they want and what they need. Uh, a lot of our students that graduated has gone on to sit on commissions and boards and committees. And uh, we're very proud of our past graduates. We taught, I would say, six, seven classes. Right. Um, so it was fun because after the class, then you join a SWAT team. Our SWAT, our SWAT team was assistant watch advocacy team. So together we, we work on issues. Education, housing, we we put these things together. I tell you, to being together hand in hand, it's stronger. Exactly. Yeah. Because if you if you have an issue, you feel like it's overwhelming to to deal with it yourself. You come to African city and you learn, oh, that person, that's the issue. Oh, that one too. Then you work as a team, then you give them as a team. Right. Now, when you when you were going to school, you went to Cal State Northridge? Yeah. And you were the president of the students with disabilities. Yeah. Yeah, I thought... Uh, well, Daniel and I did it together. Um, um, when I went, to, when I first got to CSUN, CSUN had one of the largest uh, students and disabilities um, in the country system. And uh, there was a lot of people with disabilities, but when I started going to the, um, the students with disabilities club, like there be one, two people, and I would say, "Where is everyone?" And so I started asking the students, "Why don't you come to a lot of these meetings?" Oh, too political. I'm not into that. So I thought, okay, why are we making more social? Because a lot of students, a lot of people with disabilities, are very isolated. They have a hard time getting out and socializing, and and so I wanted to create, then when I wanted to create an environment where people felt safe to come out. And so we worked on that um, for a couple of years. And by the time I graduated, we had a good group of like 30 people. Uh, so one, once a month, we did, uh, we did like a get together on campus. And then one month we go out to a restaurant or a movie and thing like that. And so that way, and that way people can meet other people with disabilities. And pretty soon we became just a group of friends. Mm. Yeah. Ah, uh, I you know, it 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 makes me proud just just you know to know to know you and what you do and the advocacy that you just go after, you know, it's, um, it's, it's something that we need. I'm going to, I'm going to throw out, I'm going to go completely to another realm of, of life and I'm going to throw out a name <laughs> and that name is, and whatever comes to your mind, Dustin Hoffman. Oh my God, I knew you could just say that. <laughs> I was let's see, that's enough. Yes. He's yeah. such a wonderful man, sweetheart. Uh, so uh, where did you meet Dustin? 
I'm getting on the on the set of luck. I would um they were looking for uh, someone with cerebral palsy. They called uh, UCP, United Cerebral Palsy, and uh, they said, we know just the person. So they called me up and they said, we know you haven't been acting for a while. Would you like to come out of retirement? And like, yes. So they sent me the booking for an interview. I met with the, the recorded interview, and within two days I found that I got the part. And I was like, oh my goodness. It was an HBO show, yeah. it went for one season, and I got to meet the illustrious Dustin Hunter. He was the sweetest man, oh my goodness. Yeah. Really sweet, and not only and he's got a big heart. Not not only do he want to talk to me, but he wanted to find out how he can make my life easier. Oh. So he decided his mother-in-law had um a wheelchair accessible a beach chair, a huge. Gigantic beach. He said he asked me if I like the beach. And I said, sure, I mean, who doesn't? The yeah. thing I know, he sent me a beach to, you, to my house. Ah! I'm like, what the? I mean, he's just so, when you meet him, he's just got the biggest heart and the biggest smile. Uh, well, it's, I, I can vouch for that because I met him once uh on on the set of meet the hawkers and just to hear your story brings back these amazing memories um wow big and i saw that i saw your clips today uh from that show and you're just like it's like i want to see more of you on tv i love your <laughs> role was very, and and the relationship you had with that the the, the guy that you were like flirting with and i was going I want to see what happens in season two. <laughs> it's funny because they were talked before they canceled season two. They talked about having me come back, uh, then, then starting a relationship between him and I. Oh, yeah, okay. that would have been great. That would have been great. Um, and that who would produce that again? I'm blanking. Um, uh, um, David Milch, right? David Milch, yeah. Yes. Uh, he, he was the one that said, I want to find someone with cerebral palsy. He's, a, he's an amazing man. He really is. And yeah. I, met, I met him after the after party. Yeah. He's so sweet. No, oh, thank you, David. No, thank you. You did a wonderful job. I'm like, wow, thank you. You really did. And and what a cast. I mean, Dustin Hoffman, Nick Nolte, okay. Dina Bell. I mean, it was a, that's like. Yeah, they had a great cast. Um, I wish the show continued. So. Yeah. That's well, Hollywood for you. You're hot one day, you're not the next. Yeah, yeah. Now, what what was one of your favorite places that you have worked? In the uh, advocacy or acting or anything. If you had to pick, maybe let's say a moment that you can remember that you went, ah, oh, that was a moment. A moment in my life. I would uh, I would uh, DC because I wasn't in DC alone. I went with the love of the advocate. And I, I would say two times. The first, first was when I was in DC with the other advocate because when we got arrested, it was so empowering because there was a lot 30 of us that got arrested. We were all sitting in the room. And I just, I looked around at everyone. 
and you can just steal the passion in the room of why we can let this end. I remember my my dear friend Sydney was there and she um she she like to have a good stuff in Eureka and she was there and she, and she, I said to her, hey Sydney, do you want to get arrested today? She goes, uh, why would I? And I said, because I'm going to get arrested today. And she goes, let's go, let's do this together. So it was just, it was so much fun because we were sitting there together looking at each other going, I can't believe we did this. I can't believe we did this. So that, that was something that I really, I'll never forget. That was amazing. I would say the other times, um, actually, when I went to the African, I collide. And when we have, when we have, after like, I would say three or four classes, we had come together, a big, good group of Africans. And I remember one Christmas, we had a party at the office. And we looked at so many advocates, and when I look at the picture today, it's just, I had such pride just knowing that the, um, all these advocates are taking the questions, and we were, we were a good group getting a lot of stuff done in the community. And that was also a very strong point for me. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, you have so many memories. I mean, you're you're about to write an autobiography, right? Or are you already writing it? I'm trying. I'm on the second set, dude. Let's hope we go somewhere. I can't wait. I can't wait. I'm ready. I, I want an autographed copy. Oh, I got one more memory that was incredible. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Another memory was, was the season finale of Luck. We were on the we were on the, we were on the site, and it was the last episode. Uh, we were I I usually get hired around ten or eleven at night. But my husband Daniel always teasing me. He said that when there's a camera around, no matter what time what time I is, I'm always excited when I see a camera. <laughs> like, and we, we didn't stop filming until about one in the morning, one thirty in the morning. And someone someone found out that the morning we ended the season finale with my birthday. And someone so they came out with the cake and they <sighs> sang to me. Everyone, the cast, the crew, and that was it was one thirty in the morning in Hollywood, and it was just so much fun. Oh, oh my God, uh, that's great! I've got, I wonder if somebody has a picture of that. I don't know. I mean, Houston, the big green stuff. Oh my God! What is something? What is something that most people wouldn't know about you? Like one one thing that? Oh, really? Uh, that's a hard one. You, you like eating cheese balls in the bathtub. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was my last life. Uh, uh, well, I can tell you addicted to, to, to Netflix, but everyone's addicted to Netflix. Oh, I know. I know. You have a favorite show? Um... Yeah, I, I feel like a kid. I like Gilmore Girls. Which one? Gilmore Girls. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. My, my fantasy had always been to be able to work on a sitcom. Mm. I love sitcoms, and I love the quick humor. Yeah. Every time I audition for a part, I imagine myself on the sitcom. I could definitely see that. Well, you know, in six months from now or less, hopefully we'll be out of quarantine and there'll be a ring on the phone and, you know. I would love You know, and I was reading, you, you're a sports fanatic. You love to snow ski, water ski, 
jet ski, parasailing, and you wheelchair dance. Yeah, well, that was my last life. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I like, to stay, I like to stay active. I like to stay in the community. I used to snow ski. I used to belong to the group called Unwreckable. And the, the, the disabled snow skiing club, working the disability sport club. And uh, oh, we used to drive up the mountains one time. Oh, I know, once a month. And then they went to cabin for the weekend. And uh, um, um, we ski on Saturday and Sunday and the drive back home. Uh, the times we could take vacations. <laughs> oh, I do, have a, I do have a secret story. Okay. So remind me, when I was about 25, 26, no, more like 22. Anyway, I was dating this guy who actually could come into the club to begin with. He introduced me to the club. So he drove. I did not. And so we were driving one time to, to Mama. We stopped like in small town, Lone Pine or something. And he's like, okay, I bet you could drive. Because he kept begging me all the way. I knew you could drive, I knew you could drive. No, I can't, no, I can't. We, we, we park in this parking lot, and he gets out, and he goes, slide over. And I'm like, boy, just slide over. And I slide over, and he's like, try. And I'm like, what? He said, just in the parking lot. So we drove in the parking lot, and he's like, get to a good job, to try the highway. I'm like, what the? So I drove all the way from like, um, no point in the memory. And then on the way back, I did it again. We were in Lone Pine. We, we had just pulled over and we were about to switch a driver. She would give me drive. A cop pulled up behind me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And they just go, no, I'm, I'm just, I'm freaking out. And he's like, can I calm down? How can I calm down? I don't have a license. And there's a cow coming up behind me. He's like, just act cool. So I, I, I go over there and the woman goes, hi, officer, can I help you? And he just said, are you guys okay? And we're like, yeah, we're just looking driver. He's like, Okay, have a good day. Me leave. I'm like, oh my god, I just died. I wore the one who goes, what the hell was that about? My boyfriend goes, we're in a small town, and someone pulls over, and and then um, this they want to make sure you're okay. I'm like, oh, well, they don't do that in their life. So I was, I I thought I was going to jail. I was like, oh my god, that's the one time I did not want to go to jail. Right? It's like, ah, uh, where's your license? <laughs> oh my god, I'll never uh, forget that. What What is your biggest joy in life? People, I love people. My family, especially my boys, Daniel and Brandon. I just talk about them and they smile. Yeah, yeah. I guess, that, I guess that, that's the hardest part about this whole quarantine is that I miss people, I miss connecting. Um, I'm, I feel like a better person when I can connect with the world. Right. Yeah. I'm there with you. Yeah. What do you want the most? at this moment in your life? To get out of quarantine. <laughs> Amen. Amen, a woman. <laughs> I just want to take a walk around the walk. I just want to meet a friend for lunch. I just want to just be with people again. Yeah. Be able to get someone a hug. I miss hugs so much. Uh, I'm a hugger. Me too. Virtual hug? Hey. <laughs> <laughs>
Oh, I love it. And I love you. Love you too. And thank you. Thank you for asking me. Oh, it was a nice visit. And again, say hi to uh, your your wonderful two uh, guys who are with you. And sad you, mom, for me. I will.